to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just a little bit more volume. I don't want to put too much strain on my voice, please. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning, oh God. We praise you this morning, God, for this day that you have made. And we, oh God, will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for this moment. We thank you, God, for this day, Father, that we set aside to celebrate your resurrection. Oh, God Almighty, even as you revealed yourself, oh, God, to John on the Isle of Patmos, you said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am he that was dead and is now alive. You are the only one, God Almighty, Father, who has conquered death. And we just praise you this morning that you died so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. We glorify you for today in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Abba Father, that you saw it fit that we could be here today. Many had plans for today. But they are not here. We thank you, God, for sustaining grace. We thank you for the power of the cross. We thank you for the power of the blood. We thank you, God, for the power of grace. We thank you for the power of Calvary. We will never fail, God, to say that you are a great God. You are a wonderful God. You are a mighty God. We place everything in your hands today, O oh God Almighty, as we come into the sanctuary to worship you. As we come into God, the tabernacle of worship, we enter God into the holies of holies. As I decrease, as we decrease, we ask you to permeate us, God, with your being. We ask you that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will fall on us today. We can't do it without you. We ask that every person, oh God Almighty, that walk through these doors, that in the name of Jesus, that your presence will be felt. We ask you, oh God Almighty, that your glory, God, will fill this place. Let your all-consuming fire fill this tabernacle, God, and purify our hearts, purify our spirit, purify our minds, oh God Almighty. I place, oh God, Deacon Elect Ray and the family in your hands. I pray the family, oh God, for the family of Marsha this morning in your hands. While we don't understand why God, and as human we will ask you why, we know that you are sovereign. It's not humanly possible, God, to explain these things. But in the midst of the pain and the sorrow and the grief, oh God, even as they mourn, we ask you for strength for her husband. We ask you for strength for her children. We ask you for strength, oh God Almighty, for oh God's siblings, her cousins, her friends, her families, her kids. We ask you, God, that you will strengthen them this morning. We ask you, Holy Spirit, that you will comfort like only you can. Only you can do it, God. Everywhere it hurts, we ask you, Father, that you will surround them with your love. Surround them with your love, oh God. Surround them with your love, oh God. Surround 
them with your love and for everyone that is mourning this morning we ask you that you will surround them with your love embrace them joy all of them God with singing we pray for sick bodies that they be healed we anoint ourselves with oil touch us one more time touch my body one more time we place this service in your hands we put it in the name of the father in the name of the son in the name of the blessed holy ghost somebody put their hands together for jesus somebody put your hands together for god glory to god hallelujah amen hallelujah this time i'm gonna ask our minister let kareen and she will be coming to do the notices and announcement and she will also be reading the scripture the day scriptures for us in jesus name I must give greetings to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I must extend greetings to our Apostle-elect, Olivia Ferdinand, our senior pastor, Pastor Shereen, our assistant pastor, Prophetess Campbell, Mother Smith, Deacon-elect Kareeman Young in his absence. Our morning reading would be taken from St. Matthew 28, verses 1 to 6. Say amen when you find it. Oh, it's on the monitor. Please stand for the reading of, the, of his holy word. Thank you. And it reads, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn, toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment was white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, fear not he, for I know that he seek Jesus, which is crucified. He is not here, he is risen, as he said, Come, see a place where the Lord lay. And I'll go straight into the announcements. You can be seated. We are on day 99 of our Bible through the year. Glory be to God. Amen. Brother Joel, Solid Rock Redemption Church of God is having... Their sixth anniversary, six years church anniversary. Under the team, go forward in spite of the obstacle. Exodus 14, verse 15 to 16. This will take place on Thursday, Friday, and Sunday night, which is April 13th, 14th, and 16th. We will be visiting on Friday, April 14th. Please come out and support them. More information will be posted in the church group. The church is on 211 Schenectady Avenue, Brooklyn. Granite Worship Center is having their fourth year anniversary. 
Thursday, April 27th to Sunday, April 30th, under the theme, Living in Perilous Times, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. The service will be in-house on Zoom and Facebook Live. Our own apostle-elect will be speaking on the Friday night, April 28th. We will be going as a church to give our support. Please keep her in your prayers. We will be having communion today as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. As we resume our Bible study, we are inviting you to join us. We are studying the book of Revelation verse by verse. It is on Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. As we can see, we are living, as we can see the time we are living in, I urge you to come and listen to the book of Revelation. Because in Revelation 1 verse 3, it said, Blessed is he that readeth and he that heareth the words of the prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. And we can all see that the time is at hand. On Sundays we, at 11 a.m., we have church here in this beautiful sanctuary. It is also live on Zoom and Facebook and it will be on YouTube. Mondays to Fridays, we have prayer at 6 a.m. Wednesdays is our Bible and Bible study night, 7.30 p.m. Wednesdays is our prayer and fasting day from 12 a.m. to 1 p.m. May 1st is our next monthly fast from 12 a.m. to 1 p.m. These are all the announcements. Please bear them in mind. Have a God-filled day and be blessed. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Minister Elect. Glory to the name of Jesus. We just bless God today. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to shift gear in just a little bit. Hallelujah. As we ascend into the hills of the Lord, but I just want to welcome again as we humble ourselves to our Father which art in heaven. Glory to the name of Jesus. We just thank God for today. We are grateful to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We are grateful to be in the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I am grateful. Somebody ought to say, grace brought me here. The cross brought me here. The blood of Jesus brought me here. Somebody ought to say resurrection brought me here. Glory to the name of Jesus. We thank God. I just want to welcome everyone today. Amen. I welcome Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You are welcome. Praise the name of Jesus. Pastor Shireen, our assistant pastor, come on, put your hands together as we honor her today. Glory to God. Our mother, Simit, I bless God for you, mama. Amen. Our prophetess, Campbell, glory to God. Our minister, elect, Kareen, brother Ken, brother Max, our musicians, we bless God for you. Brother Andrew, Brother Joel, amen. We also want to welcome our Zoom and our Facebook viewers. We welcome you. We got in trouble last week, but we are forgiven now. Amen. Glory to God. They understood what was happening last week. We bless God for every person that is on Zoom. I can't name you out as I'm not logged in. Amen. We also have in-house with us today some visitors. Amen. First time visitors and we just want to bless God and they are family, not just visitors, but they are family of our deacon elect Ray. That makes me family because I'm family too to um, Deacon Elect Ray. And we just want to welcome Michelle Lewin today. Come on, come on, um, come on church, come on, put your hands together. Amen. We also have Suze, Suzanne Morris. God bless you. Thank you so much. And Shania Johnson. Glory to the name of Jesus. We thank God. Amen. They are first time visitors. You're no more a visitor after coming today that's it you're no more a visitor please feel welcome amen on behalf of god's chosen prophetic restoration ministry the leaders and members we welcome you today as we worship god in the beauty of holiness <coughs> amen glory to the name of jesus we are going to enter into worship amen i've been overusing my voice but i am here to worship god Come on, somebody, just put your hands together for Jesus. Come on, just open your mouths and just begin to worship God today. Come on, just open your mouths and begin to worship Him. 
Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The family that's here is mourning a loss, but they saw it fit to be in the house of God. Glory to the name of Jesus Christ. So I just want us to just open our mouths and begin to give God some praise in this place. Come on, just open your mouths and say, God, I thank you. God, I love you. God, I worship you. God, I magnify your name. We worship you. We pray. Today, Jesus, come on, come on, come on. Just for a few more moments, just say, God, I appreciate you. Oh, with all of my heart, I give you all the praise. Come on, with all of my heart, I worship you today. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the sacrifice. Come on, open your mouth. And give God some glory. Oh, we can do better than that. We can do better than that. All the, oh, the angels that worship Him 24 hours a day. Oh, we join with the earth of heaven. Oh, we worship you today, God. We magnify you today. We worship you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. If it, that is your best worship, I just want us to open up a mouth and say, God, I thank you today that you kept me. Oh, thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you pay. Thank you for the shed blood. Oh, the blood that Jesus.
Jesus grab a hold of you, he doesn't lose that grip. When the blood of Jesus grab a hold of you, he doesn't lose his grip, for he will never. Somebody worship him. Somebody magnify him. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. We worship you. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My soul does magnify the Lord. And my spirit praises his name.
worship the Lord today. Not even death, hallelujah, could not hold him captive. Even in the grave, he's the Lord over your life. Even in the grave, he's the Lord over my life. Even in the grave, he's the Lord over Brooklyn. Even in the grave, he's the Lord over New York. Even in the grave, he's the Lord over America. Even in the grave, he's the Lord over the world. No, that's not on the list. Oh, you are Lord. And he is risen from the dead. And he is Lord. And every knee must bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Somebody put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. I am in the worship mode today to celebrate our risen Savior. Hallelujah. Because when the enemy says, no, the blood of Jesus Christ speaks better things than that of Abel. And I'm here to worship God. Voice or no voice, I'm going to worship Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, what singing? Oh, what shouting? On the early morning, when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory! Hallelujah! When we meet the blessed Savior in the sky, redemption coming. Praise the Lord! What a wonderful freedom! Glory to His name!
tell me that before I knew the truth. yesterday and I began to question God why and I said even in this moment when we're here to celebrate your resurrection we're mourning the loss of our loved one and I say God as I decrease in this house pray God that your spirit will increase in me let the resurrection power God fall in this place today let us God even see you through this God we cannot explain it but we know that you are in touch with our grief and our mourning God you are in touch with them because you gave the ultimate sacrifice your son and just like you rose triumphantly on the third day we 
believe almighty God that she shall be risen with you. But God today will put a lot of you and the children I put them in your hands. I put the siblings, God, in your hands. I put the aunts, the uncles, God, the cousins. I put them in your hands, God. I pray for your shalom peace your peace, God, that surpasses all human understanding. And as we call forth the family, the immediate family, come Mother Smith, come stand. God, even though we're very mourning and we're very tears, they are a language that only you, God, can understand and you can interpret this grief and this pain, God, that we're feeling in this moment. And as I lay my hands, God, remove my hands and place your hands. Remove my hands, God, and place your hands as we stand, God, for the family. We stand knowing, God, that you are the giver of life and you give it and you take it away. And even though we understand that, it doesn't make it any easier, God, for us. But we come nonetheless broken. We come confused, we come sad. But we come nonetheless in any state that we are because we know, God, that you will receive us. So we pray, God, for your peace that surpasses all understanding, your shalom peace. To rest with the family, God, for the upcoming days and weeks that are to come. Oh God, we need strength. The family needs strength. Oh God, we need strength. We need strength today, God, to carry through. We need your strength to carry through. This flesh, we can't do it. But we know, God, that it is a Christ that rose triumphantly that lives within us. And because, God, of that power, we know, God, that we can make it. So we put the family, God, in your hands. We put ourselves in your hands. And even now, God, we tell you thanks. Even now, we tell you thanks, our Father, we tell you thanks. tell you thanks in Jesus name wrap us in your arms in Jesus name amen and amen hallelujah for those of you that don't know one of our very young cousin 51 years old suddenly passed away yesterday it was not expected and we're mourning this morning but I must still come and stand before the church to do what God has called me to do because I know is in him we live we move and have our beings and we know that with him we just ask that the church continue to pray pray for us during this time continue to keep us in prayer during this time as we hold up for the husband and we hold up the children we hold up the sisters and the immediate family just continue to keep us in prayers in Jesus name amen and the scripture was already read amen by minister I'm not even gonna read it again hallelujah I'm just gonna flow as the Holy Ghost give utterance uh, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord on your way down give God a hand clap uh, on your way down because he is still uh, let us just take a moment. I'm gonna ask you all to stand uh, so we can shift the atmosphere a little bit with some worship. Uh, uh, we need God to saturate this atmosphere uh, with your presence. We need God for you to saturate this atmosphere. Uh, uh, God with your glory. Uh, with your glory, God, your Shekinah glory. Uh, we shall back you, Father. We glory. In the midst of the storm, we magnify you. 
we that you would be mindful of us this morning and as we are here today hallelujah glory be to god you may be seated in the presence of our king our resurrected king this morning i know there are some first time visitors that may have come after the announcement amen I'm assuming, um, Kay, that that is your Hallelujah. mom. Amen. Stand, woman of God, let us acknowledge you. Amen, Amen. church. Give her a round uh, Amen. of applause. Hallelujah. Amen. Give her a round of applause. Hallelujah. Amen. I see our brother Mark in the back. Amen. And I'm not sure who is with. Um, I, that's, that's wife. A Amen. 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 She carries you off well. Amen. Amen. You better smile for that one. Can I have some volume on this mic, um, um, Brother Ken, to not to overexert my voice? Amen. This morning. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. That is much better where we greet uh, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Which is in our midst today. Amen. It is in him do we live, move, and have our beings. Uh, we greet our pastor elect of this house, Pastor Olivia Ferdinand. Amen. Let's give her a hand clap. Amen. Amen to our minister elect in God's church. Amen. Our prophetess Campbell. Amen. Our uh, mother Smith. Amen. Amen. And Deacon elect Ray in his absence. Amen. It was trying um, Auntie Barbara because the baby became ill. Amen. And it was this morning at 5.30. Amen. That we came out of the emergency room with him. Amen. So the enemy is out like a roaring lion. But I already know that he is a pretender. He's pretending to be something that he's not. Um, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I didn't see. Amen. 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 Remind me of the sister Yannick. Amen. Stand up, woman of God. Stand up. Can I just share a quick testimony? Amen. Amen. Welcome, woman of God. I have to share the testimony this morning. Amen. Because it was on Thursday while I was off. We was here in the sanctuary and uh, sister Yannick came in. And in the moment, amen, she recommitted her life to the Lord on the spot. Amen. It was in a church service. Amen. Amen. She recommitted her life to the Lord. And I know that angels are rejoicing this morning. Hallelujah. Because you recommitted your life to the Lord. And I know without a shadow of a doubt uh, that God is going to use you and that he's going to use you mightily. Amen. I know that there is some fire in that belly of yours. Amen. That needs to be poured out. You're not going to sit on it. Amen. You're going to be used in the kingdom of God for such a time as this amen and um, let's give a round of applause amen to our brother ken amen in the sound booth amen and our brother max and to all the wonderful saints of god our musician amen we can't forget our amen our prophet is Campbell. amen we cannot forget them amen he's a wonderful young man amen by way of announcement this happened late last night that's why he didn't make the announcement that he has offered amen so um Kay, you can consider this he has offered to teach amen the children and give them free lessons amen piano lessons amen 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 you don't find people offering up their services like that amen but he has offered up his service to come in the sanctuary on friday evenings amen to teach the youth and give them amen free lessons amen we will it will begin in may amen we will confirm the date and the times amen because we want to make sure that we keep our children busy amen and teach them some good skills and what better skills amen than to become a levite in the house of god you see a levite lead the god's people into worship and know how to chase out demons when saul was tormented it was the levite in David, hallelujah, that played the instrument and deep had to flee. So we bless God for you, brother Andrew, to have offered up such an amazing gift. Amen to the children. Amen. So we are looking forward to the children coming out. Amen. Amen. And today, amen, we know that we are celebrating a resurrection Sunday. There should be a hand clap on that. Amen. We are celebrating resurrection Sunday. 
Amen. Our God is not like them other gods who are still, amen, lowercase g. Let me just make that clear. But our God, he rose triumphantly on the third day and he is no longer in the grave. Up from the grave, he arose. Amen. And today we are here to celebrate, amen, the life of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. And what he did and what he accomplished, amen, that was a day when he conquered death. Amen. He conquered death and that is the reason why we have hope. Uh, even where this passing is concerned, we still have hope. Amen. That we will see our loved ones on the other side. Amen. And that is the reason why when we get an opportunity, we do not take it lightly and we offer it no matter where we are in Jesus' name. Amen. God, as I decrease in this house, I pray God that you will increase. I pray, Almighty God, that your power will fall. Let your word, God, be delivered with power, with might, and with clarity, that your people will be edified, and the enemy will be horrified in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen, if you can. Hallelujah. We are all familiar, hallelujah, with this story, amen, of the burial, the crucifixion that led up to the burial uh, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, we know that this happened on the third day. It was a Sunday, and I believe it might have been a day like this. Um, the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew 28, he said, at the end of the Sabbath, and it began towards the first day of the week, uh, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to the sepulcher and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door that sat upon it his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow and for fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men and the angel answered and said unto the woman fear not he for I know that he seek Jesus which was crucified and verses six say he is not here for he is risen and he said come see the place where the Lord laid hallelujah we talk about the third day power I have been a recipient of that third day power I have put that third day power church to the test it was a few years ago hallelujah that my brother amen suffered a stroke at the brain stem level I'm going somewhere and my sisters and I and the church at the time we came together and we said that we are going to fast and we are going to pray uh, for three days and we chose uh, three days uh, for a specific reason because we understand uh, the third day the power that comes on the third day the resurrection uh, and life I'm talking about a case where he was in intensive care uh, and they were expecting him to die he could not speak uh, he could not swallow he could not help himself uh, and we gave the Lord, we put a demand on it using the resurrection power, uh, the dominus power of Almighty God. You see, that is a type of power uh, uh, that cannot be measured, it cannot be matched. Uh, it is the type of power that uh, uh, it cannot be explained by science. Uh, it is the power that rose uh, Lazarus uh, from the dead, uh, and it is the power that rose himself, Jesus Christ, uh, from the dead. So we understood the significance of the third day power of the resurrection power and we put it to the test and we say God by the third day by the third day not the fourth day I said God by the third day we need a miracle he needs to come off every breathing machine he needs to be able to swallow he needs to be able to speak you see what you don't understand and I need for you to get it it was a death sentence uh, that was given to him that he was expected to die uh, but you see something happens when you know the resurrection uh, and the life uh, even though this happened over 2,000 years ago uh, we know that the power that rose him from the dead 2,000 years ago uh, it is the same power that we have access to now uh, that we don't have to go before a priest anymore we don't have to slay the lamb anymore we don't have to bring the bullocks we don't have to bring the turtle doves all we gotta do is call upon the name of Jesus and my Bible tells me that if I call upon the name of Jesus
Jesus, uh, that every knee must bow and every tongue uh, it must confess. So we understood uh, our assignment and we said that he shall not die but he shall live. Uh, and we declared and we decreed that on the third day uh, that there must be a turnaround. Uh, on the third day, men must be baffled. Uh, and on the third day, I said, God, you must be glorified. Uh, and let me tell you something the church went in um, and we prayed and we believed God um, and just as we said on the third day I'm not talking about um, something that I heard on the TV I'm talking about something that I've experienced myself um, on the third day um, they took him off everything that he was connected to um, he began to swallow um, he began to speak um, the doctors were baffled um, they didn't understand because you see what the enemy meant for evil God turned around for his good you see the enemy thought that they had Jesus when they crucified him when he was on the cross he was still being mocked he said you perform so many miracles but here you are you cannot even save yourself but can I say set up can I say set up to the church can I say that was the greatest set up that was ever recorded in history that was a setup that when he came you see men had to be baffled and sometimes God has to find a way to blow the minds of people because people fail pastor all to believe that the same God that called forth Lazarus from the dead the same one who touched the woman with the infirmity the same man who touched the blind man and caused the lepers to be made whole I'm talking about the same man that walked the face of the earth he was the one who rose himself up from the grave he arose and he arose victorious he said oh death where is that sting oh grave where is your victory you see we serve a God and we need to be reminded this morning that he is the resurrection and the life that he is the first and the last that he is that was and is and is to come that he is alpha and he is omega that he is the beginning and he is the end and besides him there can be no other but we need to know that he is still the reigning king he is still the undefeated champion of the universe that has never lost a battle that has never lost a fight and that never lost a war so sometimes the enemy will put us in some corner prophetess that we feel that all hope is lost and the situation it does seem dead and it is dead in the eyes of man and sometimes you bring it and you put it in the tomb oh god you put it in the tomb and you walk away from it and you keep up on it but I am here today just like they said show us come and see where the master laid you see what the enemy wants us to do is to remain in the tomb he wants us to remain in the tomb of sadness he wants us to remain in the tomb of depression he wants us to remain in the tomb of sickness he wants us to remain in the tomb of confusion he wants us to remain in the tomb, in the tomb of non-progressiveness. He wants us to remain in the tomb of I'm still under the juniper tree. He wants us to remain in the tomb of so much hurt and so much pain. He wants us to remain in Lodibar. He wants us to remain in the valley of the dry bones. But as you preach last Sunday, Pastor O, you see the power of the tomb is here today. The third day power to say you better come out of your tomb of depression uh, today is the third day that you're gonna come out of your tomb of despair today is the third day that you're gonna rise up and worship God I don't care where they left you you see it was the woman came they came in search of the body of Christ because they came with their spices because they wanted to anoint Jesus you see where the enemy have you stuck where the enemy laid you you see sometimes unto be they come back looking for evidence of where they left you for dead you see they know your situation they know your circumstances they know that the man left you and you are broken they know that the woman left you and that you are broken they know that you had a death in the family and that you're broken they know you ain't have no money in the bank they know right now that you are sick 
and you're on your deathbed and the doctor gave a bad diagnosis so they brought you to the tomb and they left you there and they began to celebrate and they began to worship I believe the Jews that crucified him and the Roman soldiers and those that cast a lot they were my God they were celebrating that there is no way that Jesus could come out you see the stone that was placed there was no normal stone it took an angel and it took an earthquake to rock the very foundation and to divinely move the stones there's many of us in this place today that have some stones that need to be rolled away and I'm here today to introduce you to the third day power I am here to introduce you to Jesus Christ I'm here to introduce you to the one who conquered hell the one who conquered death and the one who conquered the grave I am here to introduce you to the one who can roll away every stone I don't care what the stone looks like it might look like abandonment my god it might look like despair let me tell you something i had some stones in my own life that only god could roll them away it didn't make no sense the moan that i confided in nobody because let me just be real and raw and uncut i was embarrassed to disclose and to be what was hidden behind my stones so i wanted to stay in a place where I wasn't delivered because you see deliverance requires exposure deliverance requires a stone to be rolled away and let me tell you something if the enemy had his way my stone would have remained closed and I would have still been sitting in my grave but because of that third day power that came in that dance hall for me my God divine help came and rolled away my stone just like the stone was rolled away and Jesus rose triumphantly out of the grave the enemy thought he had him the enemy thought that he had us ah uh, you see they know where they laid Jesus and they went thinking that he was still there but when they went they said he ain't there he ain't there he's no longer here this is the evidence you see I might come out prophetess walking with a little bit of limp I might come out oh my god not 220 pounds I might lose some weight some people when they're stressed they eat so I might come out a little bit heavier I might come out with some loss of hair I might come out with no money I might come out with less friends but I'm here to say I am coming out nonetheless if this is a way that I have to walk you see people can't go the whole way with you sometimes you gotta leave things behind and when the enemy comes what they're coming back to find you see they thought you would have lost your mind they thought they would have lost, that you would have lost your mind. They thought that you would have been dead. They thought by now, my God, it's been how many years she's been in that situation? Why is she standing up? But you see what they didn't know? That I might have been in the tomb. But while I was in the tomb, I was on my knees before God. You see, while I was in the tomb, I was developing a relationship with God. While I was in the tomb, I learned how to call upon him while I was in the tomb he became my friend yes I was broken yes I was tattered yes by the third day my God it would have been stinking by now that's the reason they came with the spice but let me tell you something you see when God decides to open things up for you and he decides to roll back every stone you will never come out looking like what the enemy expected you to you see they expect you to come out looking broke and broken and disgusted Jamaica you would have said them why if you come out look like your pot down and like your mash up and like your tear down and I've said drunk rub be it by me for you that's what the enemy would want for you but you see because we serve the type of God that conquered death and that could raise himself let me tell you because he's bad like that
not. He said, no, I have put you through the fire. You see, the tomb experience was your fire. The tomb experience, my God, was the crushing of the oil. And when you have any kind of oil on you, you must have a tomb experience. I never met one believer that's never had a tomb experience. And if you say you haven't, may I forgot to check out your salvation. Because let me tell you something. It says, take up the cross and follow me. That means you got to go through something. But one thing I am reminded today, on this the Resurrection Sunday, that my God, he did not remain laying in the tomb. That he rose up triumphantly. He rose up victorious. He rose up mightily. He rose up as the King of Kings. And he rose up as the Lord of Lords. He rose up as the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. He rose up as the ancient of days. He rose up as Emmanuel. He rose up as Jehovah Rapha. You see, he rose up as Shammah. He rose up of everything that we would ever need. You see, when he rose, he rose up as the gift, as the eternal life, ah, the giver of all things good. Ah, he rose up triumphantly, of King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He rose up as the seed of David. When he rose up, he didn't rose up thinky thinky. He rose up strong, triumphantly with all power. And this time, church, when we rise up, we're not gonna rise up like how we rose up the last time. You see, the last time we were still limping, and the last time we were still hopping, and the last time we were weakened, and the last time we still didn't have enough trust in God, and the last time we were still sad, and we didn't know how we was gonna make it through. But I hear God says that this time, when you rise up, when you rise up, they can never put you back into the tomb. They can never close the door because who the sun set free is free indeed. No more chains of slavery. We need the dunamis power of Almighty God to sweep in this house and say, Resurrect me, Lord, for your service. Because, minister, there's some dead things in our lives that need to be resurrected. You see what I hear God saying? He's saying, come on and show me. Show me where they laid you. Show me your brokenness. Show me your hurt. Show me your pain. Show me where they left you for dead. Where did they speak over your life and say you would become nothing? When did they speak over your life and said that you were worthless? Where did they speak over your life and said you won't become nothing and that you'll be just like your mama and your daddy? I want me, God, to show me the place. God said, bring me there and show me where they laid you because the resurrection and the life is on the sea now. The resurrection and the life, he's here to roll away every stone and to remove every grave clothes. You see, I'm reminded of our brother Lazarus who was dead, that Jesus called out from the grave. And when Lazarus came out, Lazarus was alive but still bound. You see, a lot of us have already come out, but we are still bound. But I am here to tell you today that today is the third day that God wants to take up every grave clothes off of you. I don't know about you, but I'm not going home with no grave clothes. I'm not going home with no pain. I'm not going home with no hurt. I am not going home with hate. I'm not going home with nothing that is not rightfully mine because the resurrection and the life is here. Show me. God is saying, show me where they laid you. Show me where they left you for dead. Show me because they're going to come back on the scene wanting to rejoice. But can I just say that the repast has been canceled. Their celebration has been canceled. The party has been shut down because what they expected was still to find the body of Jesus Christ. What they expected is to see you in the same place where they left you for dead a year ago. What they wanted to see you was to still remain 
in that fetal position, um, curled up um, and waiting to die. Um, but one thing they did, just like they counted out Jesus, um, they are counting us out, um, not to know the power of Almighty God. But today I take the moment to remind the church of who God is. I take the moment to remind the church of the power of Almighty God that can bring any dead thing back to life. Sometimes we go through some things. We cannot testify about it in church. Let me just be real. If people knew some of the things about some of us or tomb situation, they would never look at us the same way. But one thing I love about God, that he wants you to come just as you are, busted, tore up, and disgusted. He wants you to come in any state that you are. You don't get cleaned up to go in the shower. My God, you go in the shower dirty. That is the process. That is the, that is the reason for the shower. So when you come to God, a lot of times we want to clean up our tomb situation because we're so embarrassed. But God is saying to us today, I, God, I am here and I have rolled back the stone I have rolled back the stone of your heart because so many of us has been hurt so many times that our heart has become stone and God is saying that is not how I desire you to live there's some people that we need to forgive and to let them go there's some of us who have some daddy issues and that became a grave situation some of us have some mommy abandonment issue and that became a whole situation some of us has baby mom and baby daddy situation and that became a whole grave situation. Some of us have some sickness and financial issues and so many things that is going on that has become our tool. And how can we be comfortable in a tool that is meant to hold the dead, that is meant to hold the rotten flesh and maggots and worms and flies? But we have become so comfortable with our situation because we fail to realize who God is to us. It is the same God from 2,000 years ago. He has not changed and he will never change and he is here today to resurrect whatever is dead in your life. If there is any issue in your life, that you need to be resurrected if there's anything that you say God I might have some tomb situations and I can't say them out loud but I need for my life to be resurrected I need for some doors to be opened I need some things to fall into alignment I need for you to change my address it's not going to say one one tomb drive no more. It's not going to say that anymore. God is here to change your address. They're not going to come and find me uh, in the cemetery. They're not going to find me in the valley of dry bones. Uh, if you're looking for me, you better be looking up uh, because it's forward still. Uh, you're not going to be looking down anymore if you require prayer for any situation in your life. Then I'm going to ask you to come. If there is anyone in our midst today who has not given their life to the Lord, today is not, we see today, we might not see tomorrow. I witnessed that yesterday with our family member. We didn't expect to get that call. We didn't expect to get that, but we got the call nonetheless. And it is a hard pill to swallow. But if there is one that would like to give their lives to the Lord, or if there's one that requires prior, I'm just going to ask you, you can just stand where you are, or you can, you can come up. Amen. If there is one. Amen. As we call out our tomb situations today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Come on up.
takes us down some path that we didn't expect. And I hear God say that you had your plans and they didn't go quite as you planned them. But what happens when you don't make Christ the center of things, nothing will ever go as planned. And I hear God say that today is your day of resurrection. That every dead thing, I speak to your finances, that the canker worm and the palmer worm has come to devour, that will come back to life. I speak to your home, that will come back to life. Every soul that has risen up against you and I wish you dead and chase after you. You see the treasure that you carry in your belly. The anointing that you carry in your belly. The fire of God that you carry in your belly. I pray for the dunamis power of Almighty God to flow right now through your belly. Out of your belly shall rivers of living water flow. That the enemy that you saw yesterday, we declare today that you shall see them no more. We declare that you're coming out of every tomb. I don't know who put you there. I don't know what put you there. I don't know where you gave up, at what point you said, I am done. But I hear God said that today, if only you will trust him, if only you will bring him and show it to him, don't wait for it to be perfect or cleaned up. I hear God says, come to me, daughter. I have been waiting on you for a very long time to come back home. I've been waiting on you for a very long time huh? that he has been speaking to you huh? in some weird hours of the morning huh? and he's called you by name today huh? and he says you have regained kinship huh? you've regained sonship huh? you've regained your name in the kingdom huh? of God that the enemy see he knows your name huh? my God he knows the anointing that you carry huh? he knows the power that you carry him huh? And that is the reason why um, he fights you the way um, that he fought you. See, giving up is not an option. You wear the smile on your face and people think that you're so strong. And they don't know the hurt and the pain and the confusion. But God says, if you believe in that I am the resurrection and the life. I hear him say, daughter, put me to the test. Try me and see. My God, you will have testimonies of how everything shall come back together. I hear the earthquake that moved the stone of Jesus Christ. I hear the same earthquake in the realm of the spirit that is shaking your situation. I hear the earthquake in the realm of the spirit that is breaking generational curses. I hear the earthquake in the realm of the spirit that is shaking. I see a fresh wind that is coming together. And as we prophesy to the wind of the four corner to come and to blow on your daughter today, that your life will never be the same. Your life will never be the same. You see, Unique, look at me. Your life will never be the same. Misunderstood. People don't understand you. They don't get you, and that's okay. You were not called to fit in. You were called and set apart for the master's use. But I challenge you today to trust God. I challenge you that despite the adversity that's going to come, because I'm not going to tell you they're not going to come, that you will not make any step backwards, but make up in your mind that is Jesus all the way. And watch him do it. What you have been trying to accomplish in the last year or two years that is yet to come together. Watch how quickly God is going to turn around 
and you're going to see the priors being answered left, right, and center. Because all it took was your obedience. It's not just for you, but it's for your family. Continue to pray for your husband. It's for your family. But God has to use you as the Esther in your family. So you can slack in your right because it is not about you. It is about all that is connected to you. It is about who you are. It is about the God that is in you. Try God and see. And you will have to come back right here and testify. Of what God is getting ready to do in your life. If you faint not. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 You know. Um, okay. Can you just. Come forward with your mom and with um, with Kaden. You see, Mama, sometimes life gives us things that we can't explain, and gives us things that we don't know what to do with. Sometimes it comes in the form of I'm angry because I've been there and I want to give up and I feel like I'm not loved. I want you to embrace your daughter. I want you to embrace your daughter. See, sometimes when we go through things and not going to go through what the Lord is revealing to me. Sometimes the enemy tries to separate mother and daughter. Sometimes he tries to drive a wedge between mother and daughter because he doesn't like the family unit. He wants, I see him trying to drive a wedge between you and your daughter. And I see your frustration, Kay. And I feel your pain. And you want to give up. And you want to run away. And you want to shut down and remove yourself from everyone. But you see this woman right here. She didn't have it easy growing up neither. And how mothers of this generation like my mother how love is expressed might not be mama the way how your children would want to experience love because your mama didn't show it to you by saying I love you he didn't show it to you by hugging you and kissing you and being affectionate so that is the way how you raised her. I'm telling you from experience but I am here to remind you, Kay, that your mother loves you. I don't care what the enemy tries to say. I don't try what he tries to tell you. Your mama loves you. It might not always come up like that because sometimes she tried to correct you. And because I know that you are stubborn and the Holy Ghost telling me I work with you. So I know that you are stubborn my God so she tried to correct you and you don't always want to hear the correction because you have built up a wall around you but I hear God says that there has to be a resurrection in this family unit I don't know who tried to come in to destroy this I don't know what came in and tried to destroy this I don't know where they tried to lay you what tombs they tried to lay this family in but I hear God say that today he has rolled back the stone and it's time for you to come out. It's time for this family unit to go back. I don't know where the shift happened, but there was a shift in. I don't know where the shift happened, but I know that God says, don't let her go. I hear God said, don't give up. She might be smart from the mouth. She might not always listen. I am speaking from experience. I didn't always listen. I wasn't always the best daughter that I could have been. But let me tell you something. What that woman there didn't do was give up on me. 
sometimes what we feel inside we don't know mama how to express it even to you so we might lash out and it might come off as if she doesn't love you or if she doesn't need you but I'm speaking for her I know she loves you I know she loves you and I know this because the other day she was worried and she broke down and she cried and I said don't worry God's got this and we believe the report of the Lord so she might not show it to you the way that you think that she should show it to you but I am here to tell you that she loves you and I'm here to tell you that she loves you and Caden I am here to tell you that mommy and granny love you and most importantly Jesus loves you and there is nothing that is too hard for God so I'm encouraging you to keep praying I'm encouraging you don't let nothing I don't care what it is break this bond apart keep the family unit together the devil is working overtime keep the family unit together in Jesus name amen and amen we give God glory today we give God praise today for what he has done in our midst we thank Almighty God for the resurrection power that can resurrect families and resurrect spirits we thank him today I turn over back to Pastor O in Jesus name Change me. against backlash and retaliation from the enemy straighten your daughter anoint her one more time for service in the name of Jesus remember baby Joshua God I speak healing over him even right now amen amen what a word show me where all the troubles and the trials oppression and depression is laid Bless God for each of you today. We're going to go into another part of our service. Amen. Um, we're going to be. We're going to go ahead and collect today's offering. Amen. Tithe and offering. Amen. Glory to God. We do have virtual ways of paying, electronic ways rather of paying, Zelle or Cash Up or. Um, check cash, whichever way, whatever the Lord has laid on your heart, even credit cards, amen, we got to get with the times, amen, as this work continues, as God continues to help us as he build it, because God is the one that builds this church, and we thank God that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, we have our beautiful prophetess Campbell in the red, and our beautiful Mr. Elect in the peach and black. I think that's peach. It's a kind of a peach. It's pink. I miss that class. I miss that class for, for my colors. Amen. See if you could just start from the back and come forward with your tithe and your offering, whatever it is that you have to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. Change me, oh God.
we thank you for the offering as we collected from your people. I pray, God, that you will bless it for your use here on earth. We pray, God, for heavenly multiplication. That, God, you will double it. Some a hundredfold, some a thousandfold. May they be a pressed down, shaken together and running over. Anything, God, that was attached, God, that is not like you to this money, we ask you that it will be removed that is not like you. But in the name of Jesus, those who gave that there will be a blessing over them. Healing in the name of Jesus. That, God, there will be a memorial, God, that is erected in heaven. Because they so freely gave. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. As you saw, um, Nim Nim came and tapped for those who are given electronically. That's just our way of saying amen. We've given and Lord bless my seed. So if you gave electronically, you can, don't move off yet. If anyone else had given electronically, you can tap. Amen. 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 Today's Resurrection Sunday and the Lord spoke to us to go ahead and serve communion. I know we did it last Sunday. Amen. This is not a ritual. The Bible says as oft as you eat this body and drink this cup, you do so in remembrance of me. So as we do eat and drink, we do so in remembrance of Christ. accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior that's one and the second requirement is that you would have been baptized watery baptism not christening that we christen babies but watery baptism as long as you've met those two requirements amen you are free amen to partake in the Lord supper today amen hallelujah and first Corinthians 11 read for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. If you would just please stand. Amen. For I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks he brake it. And said take eat this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This is the New Testament in my blood, this do he as oft as he drink in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But verse 28 says, But let every man examine himself, and so let him eat of this bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Father, we give you glory and we give you praise. We thank you, almighty God, that on this day, God, over 2,000 years ago, a day like this over 2,000 years ago, my God, that you rose triumphantly for us. That up from the grave you arose, God, not as a victim, but as victor. You arose as King of kings and Lord of lords. Um, my God, the ultimate sacrifice that brought you, God, to the tomb and out of the grave. Um, is why, Almighty God, you've given us this mandate and this charge that as often as we do this, we do this in remembrance, God, um, of what you did that no other man could not do. 
So we thank you, Almighty God, for your body that was bruised, my God, so that we can have healing. We thank you, Almighty God, for the shed blood of Almighty God. Uh, God, that we can have covering, that we can have remission of sin. We thank you, Almighty God, for these, your people that will partake in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. So for those who are saved and baptized, amen, you could move from the, the back and you could come. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Once you're saved or baptized, you could come and partake of the Lord's Supper. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. I'm just going to give you a moment because sometimes it takes a little while to come home. And when he had given thanks, he break it. As a take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Break ye all of it and eat it in Jesus' name. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it and be thankful in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. This is such a solemn and sacred moment. That every time we break bread and we drink, we are doing it in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please stand to your feet. Amen. Another announcement that the Lord reminded me of, we will be having new converts and baptism class that will be coming up in the next couple of weeks. By next week, we will have a date set. If you would like to be a member of this great ministry, God's Chosen Prophetic Restoration Ministry, please reach out to myself or Pastor Shireen. Um, the number, there's a number, I don't know if we have it on the screen, but we will get it to you before you leave. We will be having new converts. If you want to know more, if you're not saved and you want to know more about the Lord, that is what we are here for, to teach you. We go, we are paper Bible saved. We go by the Bible. Genesis to Revelation. We don't add anything. We don't take away anything. We are not here to judge anyone. We are here to give you the sincere milk, which is the word 
of God. And as you drink the milk, you will wean off to some rice porridge and to some rice after that. And you grow in Christ. Amen. We welcome, we welcome, we welcome. Um, I think this is the new, the, the first one that got saved since we started here. Amen. And we bless, what's it? Yannick. I was going to say Shanique, but I was just like, did I hear S.A. Sister Yannick, you are the first convert in this church since we, this building, this spot of ground. Amen. We have other um, converts that will be starting um, baptism and new converts class four. So if you're interested, please let us know. We're going to pronounce a benediction. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yep. There is something else I'm missing, minister. Amen. Amen. So we just thank God for everyone today. It was an amazing service. Amen. As we're reminded that, listen, no stone and no grave can hold God down, can hold Jesus down. And because he arose, he arose triumphantly. So that means every situation in our lives, amen, that stone must also be rolled away. So, Father, we bless you and we just thank you today and we give you glory. Thank you so much for joining us, Facebook and Zoom. Brother Ken gave me the thumbs up. Amen. I like to get the thumbs up because, Lord, Pastor, oh, it's your fault. Amen. So, God bless you to Facebook and Zoom and we will be uploading it to YouTube. So, thank God for those that will be joining us. Amen. Amen. See, that's why she's, she's our administrator because, Lord, she has to remind me. Is there anyone that celebrated a birthday this past week or anniversary? I know Brother Ken celebrated his birthday last Tuesday. Amen. And we just bless God for him. We're still together, Miss Kate, but it is coming, Brother Ken. Uh, we had some setbacks, but we just bless God. It's still, yeah, it's still throughout the month. Listen, this is his month. So we just bless God and happy birthday to you again. Anyone have a wedding anniversary that they're celebrating or celebrated last week? Amen. We're going to be having a lot of marriages up here in this church. Amen. Glory to God. I'm one of them, y'all. Amen. I know, I, I, I know he's out there somewhere. Amen. And for those who desire to be married, I decree and declare that over you also, that God will send you a godly spouse. We don't want any and anything for the ladies and any and anything for the men. We are asking God for godly men and godly women. Amen. That love God more than they love anyone or anything else. Because when you do love God, God more than anyone and anything else, you will know how to love a woman. You will know how to love a man. So let me just talk to my single sisters like myself. God going to provide us some amazing husband. Y'all are invited to my wedding because I know he coming. And I bless God. As I wait, I'm a bride in waiting. I'm not in any rush. I know that when the time is right. Okay, he's coming. And I'm inviting myself. As a matter of fact, we're going to do that. We're going to do that, that, that um, wedding ceremony. Because this is our church. Amen. Nim Nim, I'm going to be there. Shall you out of <laughs> Nim Nim sad. I'm going to be there, Nim Nim. I'm going to come and sing for you. For free. I'm going to sing for you for free. The one he cared for me. Come on. Yeah, I'm going to sing for you. So we're going we're gonna to bless God. Stand to your feet as we pronounce the benedic benediction. Amen. May the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and forevermore. And we all say, Amen. Amen. God bless you.